simply my mum wanted to learn, so she got herself an old beat up, yeah, not quite honky tonk, but it wasn't sort of for, from an antique shop. She didn't really get around to playing it, she was busy and stuff, and it was just around, and I started tinkling on it, but not just bashing it. Well, according to my mum, it really seemed to enjoy it, so my fifth birthday I, I got piano lessons. Yeah, and uh, since then, I, th I think I learned how to read the score, for example, very quickly, and uh, I, I showed dexterity. So I, I guess natural talent was discovered quite early like that, and it sort of started from there. When I left Philadelphia, the reason I came back to London, the main and probably only reason was Hamish Milne, who I still study with. I'd known him from before I went to Curtis as well, and I remembered him as a very wise musician. Coming to the academy and studying with Hamish has been eye-opening every week. It proved to be the absolutely right move because uh, I've not really looked back or anywhere else since. I do love to listen to recordings of what I'm working on, for example. At the same time, I don't want to be too influenced by them, you know? And in the end, the more I work on whatever piece I'm working on, the more I disagree with whatever recording I listen to as well. But certainly at the beginning, it's interesting. I wouldn't say it feeds into what I do, but it certainly gives me some grounding in terms of how pianists of totally different backgrounds approach a piece. My very first CD was with Deutsche Grammophone in, a, in another musical lifetime and I played Beethoven III and Schumann's A Minor Piano Concerto. Nearly two years ago I released my first solo album with Sony, Schubert and Liszt, and the plan now is to release another one with works solely by Rachmaninoff. And it'll be Rack 3 and the Etu Tableau, Opus 33. And then... I've had a passion for Rachmaninoff for quite a while now, uh, ever since I first heard his third piano concerto, I was like, really taken and I'm, I'm very, very excited. Because it means so much to me, this music, it's also, everything needs to be absolutely right, so it's a bit terrifying, but also very positive. I can't wait to be able to record them. I'm just about to start learning two concertos. The Sansa Fifth Piano Concerto, the Egyptian, which has real oriental inflections. Chopin Chile Dare Mano, which is obviously based on the Don Giovanni aria. I'll be playing the Chopin in Frankfurt and the Sansa in Utah, which is uh, certainly in a part of the world I've never been in before. I I'm very excited because I've never played any Sansa before, and actually, I thought I knew all the Sansa concertos. But it turns out I didn't when I sat down to listen to the fifth one. So I've got my work cut out. But yeah, that'll be next March, so there's still time. <laughs> one of the things I'm particularly excited about is um, the concert at uh, Festival Hall with the Philharmonia, where I'll be playing Beethoven V, one of my favourite piano concertos, which I've played only once before, actually, in the Albert Hall. And I can't wait to see what it sounds like in the festival hall. Yeah, I'm counting the seconds. It'd be nice to play in the Holy Grail with the Philharmonie in Berlin, you know. I hope that will happen one day. Uh, not, not only because of the acoustics, but you know, the, the, the history behind it and the Berlin Phil. There's a Musikverein, another one in Vienna. 
but I've, I've already played in two halls, really, which I'd, I'd always wanted to, Karkail and Lucerne and Tornhalle. Switzerland's very lucky to have fantastic halls, but certainly they're, they're two concert halls which I'd absolutely love to play in. Obviously Vienna Phil, yeah, of course, and well, Philadelphia Orchestra would be great, Rack 3, you know, when Rack Madloff played with them, uh, that would be something really nice. practice I, I try and make every second count so if I were to practice eight hours it would be a superhuman effort because to keep total focus for eight hours is very difficult and I don't think I could do that every day but depending on the right repertoire I'm playing the concert I've got coming up um, other things which are you know everyday life sometimes Generally, the average I'll be, I'd say I'm, I'm happy with three hours. You know, I can get a lot done in three hours. But apart from the practice and music, well, classical music, I mean, there's also music of other directions, such as jazz, which I really love to listen to and I would love to play, but I, I uh, fail miserably. So I try a little for five minutes every now and then and I give up. It's a, certainly a different art and I admire jazz pianists, especially pianists very much, because they not only do they have the harmonic grounding, they also have the freedom to improvise. Apart from music, the arts really, the, that, that's, that's, what, that's really what interests me and uh, what I could spend my or all my spare time which I'll have in, in, in life to, to dedicate to that because there's so many things which interest me and possibly it's just part of me that I have this, this interest because this part is the same part which wants me to express myself on the piano more than anything. When it comes to what I play I need to be moved by the, by the piece first because the end game is moving people. 